Okay, what's up, Jones Bones? It is your girl, you know, random. I'm getting ready to go watch Oppenheimer with a co worker. Um, I am running late. I'm not usually like the running late type of person. It starts at 3 55, it's 3 50. Um, but I'm in the ride, so I'm on my way there. I probably will get there like right when it starts, but I'm not really worried. You know, I started to stress out a little bit because my coworker, she called me while I was getting ready and I had already realized around like, I had 20 minutes when she called and like she was like rushing me and I felt like her rushing me made me move like slower. Not like, oh, you're rushing me so I'm gonna move slower. But it was like, you're rushing me and now I'm panicking and now I'm forgetting everything. So that was kind of useless. I told her, she was like, oh yeah, you can't go in. I have your ticket in my hand. I said, look, if you don't give someone the ticket and then be like, give it to the foreigner when she gets here, like you don't have to wait for me in the front. Like just chill out. I'm not finna have you stressing me out. This is something we're supposed to be doing that's fun. Um, looking really looking forward to watching Oppenheimer simply because I talked to a guy on uh, Bumble like I'm, I'm on the dating scene still's on the dating scene too but I talked to a guy on Bumble and he was like oh it's a masterpiece not looking for that three hour long movie but looking for it like Christopher Nolan because if you guys don't know I did a creative writing class in college and that creative writing class had me write about like Batman and Christopher Nolan's use of darkness so uh, I'm almost there I'm here as fast as I could and uh, after this intro I guess I'll really talk about how I felt about the movie and things like that so maybe I'll try to take notes while I'm watching the movie or something I don't know see you later it was at this moment that he knew he fucked up hi um, I was supposed to get back to you yesterday to tell you about how Oppenheimer was uh, or Oppenheimer I really enjoyed that movie but also like here's what happened I got to the movie a little late and when I got to the movie at first I was like really like 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 dizzy I was so freaking dizzy because the thing about Oppenheimer is I watched it in IMAX and I don't think my little brain is ready for IMAX yet is there anyone else out there that gets a little dizzy when they're watching IMAX so anyway I watched it in IMAX. I was a little dizzy. I only cried once. There was a lot of times where I was just really shocked. Like the weight, the weight, the weight of the world felt like it was on my shoulders. Christopher Nolan, whoever is the guy that did the Batman movie and did this movie, wow, you put your ooh, ooh in it. Like you put your ooh. Let me stop showing out. You put your voluptuous, voluminous into this movie. I loved it. I loved it. Over, after I got over the headache, the actors, the portrayals. I know someone said that all of the actors were too handsome and stuff like that. Okay, and it was a good movie. That was a good, and you know what else? There was one scene that made me cry. There was one scene that made me cry. That made me cry. You know what it was? You'll never guess. No, it wasn't the bombs. That was like, that was like a, oh my God, this is really, this really happened. Like, you know what, that was a, oh my God, this really happened. And also like, I felt the anxiety of like, oh, when the character, like when the bomb first went off and stuff like that, I felt that like, like, I felt like his self, like, in my head, I saw the character fraction. Fraction into the person who is okay with being the father of bombs, and another person that is human and feels like, oh my god, what did I just do? Wow. 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 If all of this is true, like, I don't know how true it is. I know, like, Oppenheimer, yeah, real person, right? But if all of this is true... 
imagine like like if that person just had to sit down like tell it all not not about like the bombs and or anything but just like how they truly felt how they truly felt that weight of being the one who created the weapon that could in a way in the whole world like wow but i didn't tell you what made me cry there's one scene that made me cry it was the scene in which the woman she left her husband, right, for this guy. And she got pregnant really fast and blah, blah, blah. She was depressed. That was the scene that got me, the postpartum depression scene. Oh my gosh. When he had to take, when he had to take his kid to his friend's place, when he had to take his child to his friend's place, like, to do the responsible thing because his wife could not handle that pressure. You know, it was just like, wow. I thought that he dealt with it really well. You know, had to, hey, cause you take care of my child for a little while. There was, that was like a legit moment. It felt so real, which I feel like, yeah, it is real, but it just felt so real. You know what I mean? Like, whew, I did not expect that. And I know that everyone was talking about like how political it was going to be. It didn't really feel like a political form, like film to me. It just felt like it was so deep. There were so many layers. It was so deep. It had so much depth to it. Um, for those who don't know, I feel like I already said it. I already said it. You're a little too high, but you're gonna stay up there. For those who don't know, when I was in university, I wrote an essay about the dark night. I feel like I could legitimately write an essay about Oppenheimer, okay? Like, I feel like that essay would slaps. I love the idea of how he just didn't prescribe to a certain, uh, 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 he didn't just, just, just prescribe to a certain mindset when it came to his political views, okay? He wasn't necessary. I don't understand, well, I didn't see anything where it was just like, this is the party he aligns to. But he saw it from different points of views. There was humanity in him, a certain level of humanity that I quite enjoy. And it was just like, oh, I'm over here valuing free thinking. And the fact of the matter is, like, dang, isn't it a blessing to be in America where we can have our free thoughts the way we can have our free thoughts? Let me tell you, I know that sometimes, like, people, like, hate on America. And I, there's a lot. There's a lot. Like, as someone who's lived around the world, there's a lot that is that can, we can say is wrong with America. There's a lot that we can say is wrong with the world. I think there's issues everywhere we go. But the blessing of it all is the freedom. The freedom, oh my God. The freedom that I have in America, unparalleled. Unparalleled. The freedom that I have at home is The freedom that being an American has afforded me, like look at me overseas, living my life. You know what I mean? So anyway, I watched Oppenheimer and I set up the camera like this for a reason. Cause you know your girls going to the gym and stuff like that. Because after I watched Oppenheimer, I went to the gym and I worked out getting stronger. And I wanted to give y'all an update about the workout whole situation. I've been going to the gym about three months, three months. And uh, I'm pretty much weighing the same thing. Like, my my gym guy, I know, I, I think I said something about this the other day. My gym guy was about to break up with me. He was about to break up with your girl. She ain't losing no way. Yeah, he was feeling some type of way about that. And I was just like, no, even if I didn't lose no weight, I definitely feel a difference in my body. I can't explain it. Ooh, ooh, but I'm stronger, stronger. But anyway, I told him, like, I, I can't explain it, but I'm stronger and I know that. So we did a little test, right? And the test to show you what's your body, what's going on in your body. And let me tell you, girlies, y'all be like, if you ever be working out, doing the right thing, and you don't see a change in the scale, okay, it might take a while. I don't really see a change in my scale, but guess what? I turned 
eight pounds of fat into eight pounds of muscle. Body yaddy 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 muscles muscles muscles. So yeah. So I went to the gym and after the gym, I hit up the like foreign teachers because your girl don't know how to stay at home. Your girl has a problem with staying at home. So I hit up the foreign teachers and I was like, Ayo, who's gonna meet me tonight? And two people responded. So I went out to the bar at about, uh, I wanna say about 10, 10-ish. Like about 10-ish, I got to the bar and I was chilling. And you know, I was wearing my workout clothes. I brought my workout bag. The thing was, I was like, I'm tired of wearing a bra. Now, one thing about me is if it's in a dark setting, it's after hours and I'm not gonna see anyone that I work with. And probably if I see someone I work with, if it's off and after hours and I'm in a dark setting in a bra, I would take my, I'll take the bra off. And I just so happened to have my bag. So I took the bra off. This was the shirt I had on. So I had this on in the freaking bar. I was chilling, you know what I'm saying? Let the titty sag. This ain't even, now, this ain't even one of those moments where y'all can be like, let me clip it. It's so sexy. Let the titty sag. Because why? Why not? So anyway, I took my bra off and legitimately I was walking out of the uh, bathroom. And I, you know, you know, I'm not like self-conscious about not wearing a bra. Because again, let the titty sag. But I was walking out of the bathroom, like, you know, like you do when you walk into the bathroom. You gotta leave it sometime. So I'm walking in, I walk out of the bathroom, and before I leave, I turn back around, I'm like, how low did they go? You know what I'm saying? How low did they go? And I look back, and I'm like, mm. you know how you do the little booty pose, where you just like, oh, I looked at my booty. And then I started walking out, and a guy walked in at the same time. Now, immediately, immediately when he walked in, I knew my gaydar went off. I was like, oh, it's a gaze. It's a gaze. And we locked eyes, and he just started laughing, and I laughed. And you guys, you guys, stick around, because I'll tell you why he laughed later. But he started laughing, and I laughed. And then now he's like, why are you laughing? And I was just like, I feel like you caught me. You know, I'm laughing because, like, I was doing a little booty check. He didn't tell me why he was laughing. I didn't really ask, but I did find out later. So I walk out of the bathroom, and he follows me. He forgot what he was going to the bathroom for. He saw me, and he was just like, okay, I'll, I'll follow. And let me tell you, my gay boys, y'all aren't slick, okay? Y'all are not slick. Because he followed me, like, he's talking to me, follow me to my chair and stuff like that. And he's talking, and you know, the, the gay boys, Everybody is curious about the boobs, even the gay boys. I'm just gonna put that out there. Everyone gets pretty curious about the boobs. Here's what he did. He did that little laughing thing, like ah, put his head on my boot, like laughing, like like he was trying. He was trying to cope, cope touches, okay. And throughout the night, he still he was very curious. Continued to like cope touches, and I know it's not like it wasn't sexual. It wasn't sexual in the nature of like, oh yeah, he's like interested in me. Cause like for sure, for sure he was gay. However, however, they're like magnets to people. Like, and this is not for y'all to be gross and nasty underneath my comments, act right. But they like magnets to people. He was like, ah, like throughout the night he randomly grabbed them. I'm like, okay. You know, like, I think for me, I'm very open with my body for people that I feel comfortable with. And I think as a man, even though he was a man, I knew for a fact he was a gay man. It was just like, oh, you was just curious. It's like having a kid. Like, I've had kids, like, try to touch him. You know what I mean? So it's just like, yeah. You know, having a, having a gay man is like having a kid touch my boobs. Okay? Now, woman. But, um, yeah, so I ran into him. We're Kiki, he comes sits with me. He's doing the little, oh, let me laugh. And also, let me like, let me touch these boobies without asking, okay? And so we're just chilling. He goes and gets his boyfriend and now we're sitting at the table. Now, I was at the bar, um, so supposedly with a friend. Now, I thought I saw this friend, but this friend walked away. So I didn't really know if that was a friend. I was like, I'm not finna go walk after them because, like, I'm not wearing a bra. And, you know, walking around with no bra on, it's just like, 
you know and then also he was talking to a girl so i was like oh go get it go get it purr you know what i'm saying i'm not just but also you didn't say hi to me that's the only problem i had you didn't say hi to me but like also i didn't say he was like i told him later you didn't say hi to me he was like you didn't say hi to me touche too fucking shit okay so i'm sitting with these guys and like i think they're being a little shady they're whispering they're giggling they're looking at me and i was just like okay cool but you know what else they did they bought me three bottles of beer no four bottles of freaking strawberry beer and you know what else they did before the night was over? They bought me a hamburger. These hamburgers are slick, kind of expensive. And you know what else they did? They paid for KTV because we randomly went to KTV that night. So I didn't get home until like 4 o'clock this morning. Yeah. Like, I be pulling all-nighters for no reason. I did not get home until 4 o'clock. And then earlier this week, I didn't get home until like 4 o'clock. And I had work that day. You know what I mean? So here's the thing. I've given up reading my manquas. I've given it up. And I think that I'm mourning the loss. I'm mourning the loss of my manquas by going out and drinking and smoking. Okay. So I have to like, I'm talking about giving up certain things to be more healthier. And I realized that going out to the bar, I like hang, you know, the reason I was doing it, if I can be honest with you guys. There was a guy that I was interested in. Not like, oh yeah, like we gonna date. But I was just interested in him. You know what I mean? So part of the reason why I was going to the bar is just so I could spend time with the guy. And it's funny, it's funny because it's not even like that. But it's just like, ooh, if I see him, I can gauge whether, you know, he's interested or not. Um so I don't know. I don't know. But um, after the bar, we went to a KTV. And they make you order beers at the KTV. Um, and we paid and everything. And it was time to go. And we had a lot of beers left. So I just put them in my bag. I just slid them on into my bag. And so now I have beers that I probably will never drink. But... Maybe I can invite the guy over that I was talking about. Some people, if you if you are who you know and you know and blah, 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 if you know who I'm talking about, you know who I'm talking about. So, yeah, I got some beers and uh, Oppenheimer was great. And I met some gays and I got felt up. Oh, and I met up with an internet guy that I was talking to. And let me tell you, he was unhinged. Met him on Bumble. He was so unhinged, babies. He was like, uh, the thing, okay, this is, okay. We are on YouTube, so I can't say too much. Let me bring you down to my level. Okay. Here's what I'm going to say. The most unhinged thing that a man that you meet from the internet can do is try to get sloppy toppy without even taking you for coffee, okay? Like, and that's the thing though, as a foreigner, black women overseas, and like with my voluptuous body, men really project their desires onto me, right? They're, they're very projecting of their desires onto me. And they're trying to get that, that, that ebony experience from me. And they think that I'm just going to give it just because of, I don't know, what they see of the uh, black women. Not even on social media because there's not a lot of social media of black women. It's what they seek out. And I'm guessing, like, you can tell when someone's only seeking out black women when it comes for um, menstrual gratification. Okay, you can tell because it definitely shows with how they interact with you. Okay, so I've met and then also ugh, I could do a whole video on this, like kind of like dating overseas. Uh, and I just disclaimer for those who don't know, I am married. We do have an open slash polyamorous relationship. And also Stubo is dating in the States. Yeah, he's been going on a couple dates. And uh, I think Doing this would be easier over like overseas, like in America, I find someone, but like here it's just like, 
they really project what they see of black women onto me. And I'm very like open, very honest, like, you know, but I'm not like immediately jump into your bedroom just because you find me attractive. I'm not immediately like, oh, oh, you gave me attention. Let me clock, clock, clock. You know what I mean? And it's very weird when men pressure for that. Like as a woman, it's very weird and uncomfortable when men are like constantly like pressuring you to Glock Glock. Um, it's like, okay. You like, like if I, for me personally, if I tell someone no more than once, I kind of feel like I should just block them at that point. But like, I feel like there's this one guy who, oh my God. And on top of that, he lied about his height. <gasps> he lied about his height. I just want to continue to talk to him to see where that's going to go. Like there's, at this point, I talk to people online just to talk to people online. I'm looking for story times, you guys. I'll give y'all all the tea. So anyway, uh, this is a long video. Didn't set out for it to be a long video, but uh, much love and poor zero fives. And I hope to see you guys again next time. Uh, let me know what you want to see. I think I have a video coming up where I'm going to do a try on haul. Um, I just ordered like one thousand, one hundred, one thousand monies okay I, one thousand monies worth of some clothes so i want to show you guys what i got um and if you have any video ideas let me know down below much love and positive vibes